guys, this is 3ds Max news for the month of October. This month we got a new 3ds Max, 3ds Max 2025.3, the third update, and we got the introduction of Open PBR. It's a new material standard developed between Autodesk and Adobe that will help compatibility between all the Autodesk and all the Adobe software, making it easier to move materials around looking exactly the same. It is designed as the successor to Autodesk standard surface and Adobe standard material. The open PBR material can be accessed in the slate and compact material editors. It is supported in the viewport, will render with Max 2A 5.7.5 that is included in this new Max update and comes with built-in presets of many physically realistic materials. Actually, the presets are the same as the physical material. Different renderers will need to give support to this new standard. Animators should be happy with the release because a lot of bug fixes happen for CAD and biped. Now, a lot of different common errors reported by artists has been solved. Array is now around 250% faster than before, depending on the array complexity, and the Boolean set to volume are now between 20 to 50% faster than before. We got as well a new USD, now it's version 0.9, and it allows for edit print properties, import USD curve, draft mode for point instances that has been improved with different methods, and a snap to print vertices. We got as well a new Arnold for 3ds Max with improvements on volume scattering with new options, updated Intel denoiser, improved RAM shaders, a new head map image mode, a new toolbar with different icons to access some useful features in Arnold, and improvements on USD and GPU that you can check on my website. If you want more information, I cover in Patreon the new updates with examples, and this month we got 8 exclusive tutorials for Patreons. We did 2 new tutorials for the Rhino Ground Interaction series, a new video about procedural booleans in Typeflow, a tutorial about peeling a fruit using booleans, UVs, OSL and Typeflow all together, and a new tutorial in how to create tiers and other effects over the forming object using position transfer, and a new crowd tutorial. So check them out on Patreon, makes possible to keep doing these free videos for all of you on YouTube, and we are having a lot of fun on Patreon. Chaos release V-Ray 7 beta for 3ds Max. V-Ray now comes with Gaussian splat support and auto panorama virtual tours, creating automatically virtual tours with hotspots. The V-Ray BFB gets some new features with custom shaped render regions, not limited anymore to a single square, you can do multiple regions that can be any form, and an improved big net effect with more control. The scatter tool receives significant updates with instance brush to fine tune scattering objects, distribution maps to get your maps to distribute the instances, and faster exports. More models of lights, an improved PRG sky model for more realistic skies, a new V-Ray profiler to understand what part of V-Ray makes your scene slower at render time, a V-Ray lister geometry tab, and an improved browsing experience with filtering options, control multiple V-Ray geometry objects directly in the lister, and an easier way to replace external files. V-Ray GPU also gets faster, support for caustics, and out-of-core textures to be able to render heavier scenes without being limited by your uh, GPU RAM. Jonas Noel did an exhaustive first look to some of these new features, all the videos on the background are from him. Check his video that it's great covering all this stuff in detail, will be on the description of this video. We also know from a comment from Blado on a stack that they are working on a volume shader to replace the actual modifier based uh, shader system, that it's a little obsolete and not too robust. This will not be ready for the initial 7.0 launch, but will come a little bit later. i2soft announced Forest Pack 9 with official support for Max 2025, and it includes now a Forest IV plugin to create all types of procedural climbing plans, with 30 quality presets, a customizable library browser, a really fast multi-threaded algorithm, having flexibility to let it grow procedurally or hand-drawing the plans, different leaf controls, multi-layered growth options, and more.
There's also improvements in other parts of Forest Pack. We have now the distribution maps improvements, allowing to use multiple map channels, randomize a stack and separate subsplines, convert geometry leads to forest sets objects to accelerate your workflows, and a new organization of the UI as requested for the users, bringing some used elements uh, easier to access. Point cloud display optimization as well to make it way faster. Now it's not updating all the time, only when it's needed. And more stuff that you can check on his website. A speed tree has been as well updated to version 10, also now getting a vine generator for climbing plants across the trees, a new trim brush to cut your tree as you want, a redesigned user interface, a new custom mesh packing, totally customizable, available to use with FBX and USD, and different fixes. We have as well a free script from Phil Flag that it allows to easily change the 3ds Max logo and a splash screen to whatever you like. So you will have the link on the description of his video. So on the description of my video, go to his video and on his video on the description you will get the link. Uh, pretty neat if you want to change uh, to something different quite easily. And a Spline Dynamics release camera clipping pro. This script is easy and very useful at the same time. The defaults for camera clips are tied to the camera, as you know, when you move the camera, the camera clips are moving with the camera. Uh, but Camera Clipping Pro, what it does, it allows to select objects on the scene to link the camera clipping to them. This way you can move the camera in a free way and your camera clip planes will stay on the same wall space. It has some additional features like offsets and a way to adjust the FOB automatically to keep subjects always on the same spot. The tool costs $4. Meow's Fit Camera Script is another script to help you create a camera to fit whatever object as tight as possible in camera view. The script is $5. And Norberto Aguilera keeps playing with AI tools to generate biped animation from videos. He's sharing for free this dancing Wolverine animation and pretty cool result uh, for it's directly converted from a video. Uh, quite cool stuff. And 3ds Max is only for Archbeat. Let's start a strong one more time. Uh, Stefan Hampel created Elysian 2049 as a personal project, a mix of Elysium, Lothal, Interstellar, and using as a base a concept art by Robin Garrett. All the models, a scene assembly and renderings in 3ds Max, rendering with V-Ray, for Spack for a scattering, and Gaia for the terrains. Uh, Stefan has a complete breakdown on his Gumroad, so if you want to check more stuff of his work that is amazing, check it out. In Gumroad he shares more techniques that he uses on, on these projects. Mizuki Yamada created a crazy personal project inspired by Transformers. The Rican animations was made in Houdini, rendered in 3ds Max using V-Ray. Amazing stuff. Quite crazy, crazy thing for a personal project. We have Lin Chu that created this very cool personal project, taking as inspiration the universe of Harry Potter, rendered in Unreal 5 using 3ds Max and Substance 3D Painter. And Si Shen Lin shared in a stack group in Facebook different stylized 3D renderings that looks everything but 3D, amazing technique, also sharing how he's working with 3ds Max and Chaos Vantage uh, in parallel. Brahim Halawani shared these nice transitions that he did in Typeflow with lots of nice details and a small effects here and there. Anselm also doing some R&D with a 
poor mummy that he destroys in different ways and also a very nice bubble guy. Joker Productions create this nice orange getting peel following one of my tutorials in Patreon. Very nice shaders, actually the tutorial idea was his idea and I create the tutorial for him and yeah, amazing result. Norberto Aguilera is also the guy that always create amazing stuff with Biped and he has been working on a new video game called Strinova, still in development that we have a trailer that looks amazing. He said that all animations has been created using Biped. Uh, looks fantastic. And yeah, one more video about Biped with this cool tiger from Manuel Alberto Avila. He animated everything in Bipad in 3ds Max and then he used uh, Unity to create the blending, so create these fluid transitions between the different animations that he created. Dimitro Danielenko shared his work for Alan Wake 2 recreating this cool destroyed train wagon for the game. And Vladislav Osiasia shared his third de demon with an insane amount of details and he had fun creating multiple variations of it with different colors and different positions of the elements. Sean Carlos created this cool Zilla using a combination of 3ds Max, ZBrush, Substance 3D Painter and V-Ray. He used Embergen for the ambient smoke and yeah, looks very detailed and really cool stuff. Changing a style, Sinquete is a character designer and he created these funny characters using 3ds Max and rendered using Redshift. Livio Ambrosini shared his work on the latest video game from Ubisoft, Star Wars Outlaws, where he worked on the Moss Aisley back alley, and you can see the different assets that he created. Or basically, it's a base to, for the assets to be created later on. You can check the description about uh, what was his involvement on the project. And we will end with this amazing barbarian warrior from Seung Jeon Jung with amazing details using ZBrush, 3ds Max, Photoshop, Substance Painter, Marmoset Toolbag and Keyshot. Amazing stuff, uh, super detailed uh, character. If you check it without shaders, it looks, you can see even more the insane detail that this character had. Amazing stuff. And one more time this month, incredible things across the board with 3ds Max. This month, great tutorials. On the Autodesk Media and Entertainment channel, we have a super complete tutorial by our friend Aliresa Akbari, that is a usual artist in the 3ds Max is only for our Twitch section. He will guide us on the creation of a complete character animation from the basics in modeling and some tricks that he uses, texture creation, rigging with biped, material creation in Arnold, how he adds four with her Natrix, and even how he used Typhlo to scatter objects on the scene. One hour and a half of real quality content. Absolutely loving this type of videos from Autodesk. And Aliresa, uh, it's a true generalist uh, guy covering a lot of things of the project in a really great way. And being able to see it all together in one single video from the beginning to the end, it's amazing. Paul Neal also pushing a short five minute tutorial with a lot of great techniques to stack good crates with a very clever use of array modifier and conform modifier together with how to create references using the updated motion panel. Totally a uh, recommendable tutorial to see some stuff that sometimes you don't think to use it in this way and yeah, some of these new modifiers can be super useful for a lot of things. 
and Shang Soeun is preparing a very complete course about Max Script. You can subscribe right now to be the first to know when he will release it and get a 40% discount. You can already see in the website all the material that he's planning to cover. I had to I had the pleasure to work with Chang So and if you want to be the best in MaxScript, he is the guy to teach you. And we have an event next month, Autodesk Hits Portland 2024, will be happening Thursday, November 7th on the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. It's a free event with free food and drinks with a very interesting talk with Fred Roof where he will share how they use 3ds Max to create the Emmy winning VFX for Shogun and also Fallout. Super interesting talk. And one more time guys, incredible stuff this month done with 3ds Max. If you reach the end of the video and you like it, please support me giving a like, a comment, subscribing, sharing with your friends. And as always, thanks a ton to all my Patreons. They help me a lot to keep doing these videos and we are having a lot of fun on Patreon creating exclusive content and sharing techniques between us. So check it out. Uh, thank you so much, guys, and see you soon. Bye.